Hi, welcome to another video from Homesteading Off the Grid. We're outside today and it's raining. I don't know if you can see that in the video, but we don't care because it's been dry for over two weeks and we need the rain and we're loving it. We've been out here playing in it. This is my third change of clothes. I want to talk to you today about a way to make sure you never get poison ivy again. Many of you have suffered from poison ivy. I've suffered from it my whole life. This is something that uh, became even more important to us, our family here at Homesteading Off the Grid earlier this year because my wife got a case of poison ivy so bad that we had to take her to the doctor and she had to get a steroidal injection and get on some antibiotics for a, uh, an infection that occurred from where she scratched so, so much. So we did a lot of research and we found an effective way to make sure you never get poison ivy again. I've been trying it the last couple of weeks and I've not caught poison ivy, so I wanted to share it with you. Um, first of all, I wanna show you what poison ivy is not. A lot of people often confuse this with poison ivy. This is called Virginia creeper. You'll notice it has five leaves. There's all these rhymes and, and sayings that go along with poison ivy, but one of them is leaves of five stay alive. So if it has five leaves, you're pretty safe. This Virginia creeper, and it grows up and down the East Coast. Now I'm gonna show you what poison ivy is. It's all around me. This is where my wife actually contracted it. Another easy way to remember this with a silly expression is leaves of three, leave it be. This is poison ivy. It's got three leaves. And as you know, just touching it like this can, can cause you to catch poison ivy. I'm not concerned, I'm gonna show you why. What I found in my research is that the active ingredient inside of poison ivy that gives you that nasty rash that can send you to the hospital like it did my wife is called Uroshi oil. Um, it's, got a, it's, it's got a texture very similar to grease. So I put grease on my arm so I can make this demonstration for you to show you exactly what you need to, to do to make sure you don't catch poison ivy. You don't necessarily get the rash from poison ivy because you come into contact with the poison ivy. You get the nasty rash because you don't effectively get the Uroshi oil off of your body once you've uh, made contact with poison ivy. Now, if you've been in the poison ivy patch, you've been out working, you've got to watch your tools too because that Uroshi oil can get on your rakes, your chainsaws, any tool you use in a poison ivy patch, and it can actually remain on that tool and stay active for up to four years. So you've got to be careful with your tools too. But once you've come inside, we're doing this outside so we could have live poison ivy. But once you get back inside, you need to wash up. And the type of soap you use doesn't really matter. I chose Dawn dishwashing detergent because when we took my wife to the doctor, the nurse practitioner told us that Dawn has this grease cutting agent that, that helps get the Uroshi oil off of your, your, your skin. So I'm gonna show you an example and you're gonna see why I put the, the grease on my arm, okay? Because you can't see the Uroshi oil from the poison ivy. It's colorless, odorless, probably tasteless. I'm not gonna taste it to find out. So I'm gonna pour a little bit of water on my arm and then I'm gonna put some Dawn dishwashing detergent you can use hand soap or whatever, and I'm gonna wash. Let's say I was rubbing poison ivy here, and I'm gonna get the grease also. So I'm just gonna wash, wash, wash with my fingers here, and I'm thinking, oh, this is great. I'm not gonna get poison ivy. I used Dawn dishwashing detergent. I washed. Look, I'm clean. There's no way I'm gonna get poison ivy, right? Wrong. What you'll notice is that there's still grease on my arm, which means had this been Uroshi oil, I would still have Uroshi oil on my arm. However, I wouldn't be able to see it or smell it. And since it's still there, I would still get that nasty rash. So the most important thing when making sure that you don't get that nasty rash once you've made contact with poison ivy is not the type of soap you use, but friction. What you need to do is when you wash, make sure you use a washcloth or make sure that you use a loofah when, when you're washing the, the area that you made contact with poison ivy with because you've got to get that Uroshi oil off. Let me show you something. A washcloth without soap or water is more effective in removing the Uroshi oil, the active ingredient in poison ivy than any sort of soap you can get. You can rub it right off like that and now you see the grease is gone. So the, the best practice of course would be to use some sort of soap, Dawn dishwashing detergent. Make sure that your, your washcloth or your loofah is wet and use that also. Scrub it down real good. Make sure you're applying enough friction 
And if you want, if you've been out and you've gotten it on your hands, go out in the garage or the building and put a little bit of grease on your hands so that you know when you're washing your hands to try to get the poison ivy off. If you still see grease when you're done, you don't have the active ingredient of poison ivy gone. So do that, scrub it down real good, rinse it off. Now you can see that the, the grease is gone, which means that the urochial is also gone. So that is how you make sure you never get that nasty poison ivy rat poison ivy rash ever again. Thanks for joining us at Homesteading Off the Grid and make sure to check back for more videos later.